What's going on guys, this is Alex from Part Time First Sergeant. In this video, we're gonna talk about the different types of pay you can receive and the types of orders you can be on in the National Guard. Check this out. In the National Guard, you can be in two different types of statuses. That includes inactive duty status or active duty status. In this video, we're gonna talk about the inactive duty status. In a traditional training calendar, you're required to perform 48 unit training assemblies. And for the purpose of this video, I refer to unit training assemblies as battle assemblies. With very few exceptions, our soldiers are authorized to perform more than 48 battle assemblies. The exception to the maximum 48 battle assemblies required per year is code 41 for additional battle assemblies and code 42 for additional jump proficiency battle assemblies. Now code 42 are used for soldiers in airborne units that are required to ma maintain their jump status. Now for the regular legs like me and you, usually do 48. All soldiers are only authorized a maximum of 52 battle assemblies to include the traditional 48 battle assemblies. As a reminder, you're authorized a battle assembly pay for every four hours of work with a maximum of two battle assemblies per day. In addition to your battle assemblies, you're authorized additional pay based on the needs of the National Guard. I'm gonna break down the additional types of pay in three different categories. The first category is your additional training period. The second is your additional training period for special types of work and MOSs and units. And then your third is your readiness management period. Your traditional additional training period is for work such as coming in on Avon, needing to complete administrative paperwork, or preparing your unit for a massive convoy where you may need to load up vehicles or prepare vehicles for a large movement. You can also use this to complete administrative work in support of your full-time National Guard soldiers. Special additional training period for folks that are required to maintain flight proficiency, nuclear weapons training proficiency, or simulated training proficiency. Readiness management period, also known as RMPs or RMAs, are used in support of training administration or management support. These additional types of pay, in addition to your battle assemblies, can only earn you one pay period at one promotion point per day. You cannot be on any other types of statuses while utilizing these additional training periods or readiness management periods. So if you're a soldier on ADOS or annual training or you're doing your battle assembly, you cannot be on any other status on top of that. Because you only authorize one pay period per day, your pay is slightly less than your traditional battle assemblies. And to recap, all of these statuses fall under the inactive duty pay. Not to be confused with your annual training or any other type of active duty day you may fall under. Whoa, whoa, hang in there. Before you leave, make sure you check me out on social at part-time first charger with a hashtag drill weekend. And also, don't forget to check out my other videos over here. Check, just pick one of these. It's pretty cool. I mean, I liked it. I mean, I was, I, was, I was in it. I mean, spoiler alert, I teach you something. <laughs>